All right, welcome back everybody to another demo of NoSQL map. In the first demo, we looked at how to exploit some of the default weaknesses of the MongoDB configuration and extract data from it. Uh, but today we're going to take a look at if we don't have access to the mansion ports, maybe we have a web application that's built with a MongoDB backend. So I've written a very simple application here you, for typing in your uh, customer information to uh, look at how you make payments. So let's type in a customer ID of say 101. We can see our customer ID, our name, our card number, and our CVV2 code. So pretty interesting information. But let's look at how in NoSQL map we might take advantage of this. So let's start NoSQL map. Okay. So first let's set our options just like we did last time. Set the target host and our target host is going to be just the base web server so 192.168.87.140 okay. and we need to set our URI path now. So for our URI path well we also might need to set our web app port so for 80 that's good for this demo but it might need to be changed in your use case. But let's do the URI path. And we actually need to use the URI path of our search with the parameter in it. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We'll paste it in here. And right now in NoSQL map, we're only using git requests, so option four doesn't need to be set. In future revisions, we'll also be able to inject into post requests, but for right now, we'll just use a git request. The other thing, since we're not doing the network-based attacks, we don't have to set a local IP or a shell listener port. So let's go back to the main menu. Okay. Start the web app attacks with option three. Okay, so first we test, it sees if the app is up. And we did, we got a response length of 214 bytes. So we need to start the injection test now. It's gonna ask for a random string size. And what this is, is we're gonna plug a random string into the parameter. And you'll see a little bit more why later. But we need to just get a baseline reading of if we feed just garbage into a parameter, what does the web application give us back? So I'm gonna say we're gonna take a random string of five characters. So we've generated this J5PYN for a, to test injecting in the parameter. And it asks us which parameter we want to inject into. In this case, account ID is our only one. Now what's getting ready to happen, and this is gonna run fast, but I'm gonna scroll up back through it, is we're gonna to attempt to inject the random parameter and then we're gonna do some other tests uh, which are useful in testing MongoDB web applications. And I'll show you what we do. So I'm type can ID, and we see we have a lot of things that just ran. So first thing we did was we injected a random parameter. And we see that actually when we inject the random parameter, the response length varied 106 bytes. You see it was 214 up here, it was 108, down here. So that means injecting a random parameter actually did something. This is a good sign that we might be able to do some injection. So next we're going to test the Mongo PHP not equals associative array injection. And I just made up that mouthful of a name. But you see what we've actually had MongoDB do in an automated fashion for us is tack a bracket and then this dollar any, which is the syntax for not equals on and another bracket and then the set the parameter equal to our random string we created. So in theory, if our injection works, this should give us everything back that is not equal to our random parameter, which should be everything in the database, right? We found we got a response length of 425. Interesting. So we got something much larger than injecting the random parameter just by itself. And what's cool, map tells us, hey, we got 317 more bytes. We think injection works, okay? We go on down through here, we, these are stored procedure injections, and this doesn't work in this particular web application because of the way it's structured. I'll show you another web application in another demo where this does work. But you see, we ran the test anyway, and it came up and basically said, when we injected a random string, and then when we injected actual JavaScript statements to interact with the database, we got the same size response back, which seems to indicate they didn't work. So these tests didn't work, but we found one that did work up here. So let's take this URL and paste it in to our browser and see what we get back. So I'm going to open another tab. 
paste in this. And we have all of the records in the database back. So, in this particular application, we tested that the uh, associative array not equals injection worked. The reason this works is because PHP turns square brackets into an associative array, which MongoDB expects as its input. And we got all our records back. So, that's it for this demo. Uh, you can see um, another demo I, I'll run on if we're using stored JavaScript procedures to to interact with the MongoDB web, uh, database within the web application. And thanks for watching. Feel free to get a hold of me at www.nosqlmap.net. My Twitter handle's there as well as the email account for the project if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching.